Lord, thank you, Jesus. Psalms 37, verse 7. Zaburi Talabina, Saba, Mstari, Saba. O Kipu, Sima, Namando, Saba, Kanta, Namosha. Psalms 37, verse 7. Zaburi Talabina, Saba, Mstari, Saba. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Can you give me NIV? NIV. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not hearing the sound of warriors. Hallelujah. Can we read together? So want to go. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, praise God. Kala kisole na sabo kai kimi ambere zakoa na we ungoje kosa kosa kuri usimkasiri kia yeye afanyi kwa e katika njia yake wala mtu afanya e hili. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk something about waiting patiently or the power of patience. And I will not take a lot of time because I didn't come with a message. Praise God. I came so that we can, we can look upon God and we can fellowship with God again so that we can meet with God. Because one thing that I know that uh, you see, church is not a location. Church is a place in the spirit. The fact that we had this venue last Sunday doesn't mean the church is still happening in the same way. Church is happening somewhere in the spirit. And therefore, it's only who then that can ascend in the spirit. That can meet church. The possibility of transformation is because you have met the eternal spirit. Because it is the Spirit of God that transforms men. And you find that church happens somewhere in the Spirit. And so you must be brought to that location. That's why we pray. That's why we sing. So that by all means, we may appear in the location where church is taking place. See, sometimes church is taking place at Nayot Raman. At a place called Nayot Raman. At that place is a place where men will prophesy. Sometimes the, the church is taking place at Kebadula. And at Kebadula, Men are being made. Praise the name of the living God. Yes. These are places in the spirit where church can be taking place. And sometimes when you enter church, you need to decide where, where is church taking place. Because you can be in church for 10 years and never be transformed. Simply because you are going in a location, you are not going where the church is taking place. Hallelujah. And when the Bible says that we still before the Lord and we patiently and I want us to define patience. Praise God. 
I just defined it in one statement. It is the quality of self restraint of not giving away to anger even in the face of provocation let me repeat it is the quality of self restraint or of not giving away to anger even in the face of provocation it is the virtue by which one bears the trials of this life with resignation to God's will it is the virtue by which one bears the trials of this life with resignation to God's will praise God so one thing that I want us to take notice of is that patience is only powerful when the will of God is in view it means that what you are doing while it's waiting is what matters. It's not about waiting. It's about what you are doing when you are waiting. And so, what my definition captures is that waiting involves looking or focusing on the will of God. It means the mark or the whole mark of patience is the will of God. It means we can be waiting for something. But the difference is what are you waiting for? And why are you waiting for that thing? Or what benefit is that thing? Praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. The will of God is what captures the patience. And I want to say that in life, in one way or the other, you will be found in a place where you will need to wait. Why you need to be patient? And I want to show us in a few minutes why we need to be patient. Because everything God puts in a man, there are seeds, there are potentials. But between the time that the seed germinates to become a young plant and eventually bear fruit, it takes what is called time. And during that time, the fact that that seed is still small doesn't mean that it cannot be fields at a certain time. It means that time is what God allocates to resources to determine their season of fruitfulness. To determine their season of fruitfulness. Praise the name of the living God. You know, <laughs> look at me because in a few minutes I will be ascending. Praise God. I told you I'm not here for long. I'll just be ascending in a few minutes. So but what I'm saying, just capture it. Even if you cannot write it, just capture it. Because uh, some you will not get it, some will be entering your spirit. Praise God. And so, time, God, the reason why we have time, is because God apportions it and allocate the moment and the season. And so between the time when the thing is still a seed until the time of its bearing forth, it requires what is called patience. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, 10 to 15. Kumi and Kumi and Sam. It's going to go to Hebrews. Before you go to Hebrews, go to 3 John 1 verse 2. 3 John 1 verse 2, so that I connect with this scripture. Yohana 1 verse 2. Moja na mbe. Mlangwa panza mstari wa mbe. Uh, give me King James. Yes. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want us to see something first. You see, when we read in the book of Psalms 37 verse 7, it says that wait upon the Lord patiently because the one that causes thee to prosper. And this verse is saying that that you might prosper in health even as thy soul prospered. So, the level in which you prosper is commensurate to the extent to which your soul prospered. So, the first prosperity that need to come to any believer is the prosperity of their soul. Praise the name of the living God. Because when at the end of times, when everything shall be raptured, what shall matter is the state of your soul. And therefore, time on earth has been given so that you can dictate. You can dictate where your soul can end. You can dictate the destination of your soul. You see, all of us will spend eternity. Whether you are born again or not, the, the question is where? So I need to talk about the Hallelujah. And the reason why we need to prosper in the soul is because it is your soul. That capture the dimension of the purpose of God in you. Anything that God puts in a man, it is captured in the soul. It is captured in the soul. And so the extent of the of the soul. It is the of the soul. It is the extent of vitality of the soul. This is the prosperity of that person. So no matter how much a man can be educated. No matter how much wealth a man can have, if they are not prospered in their soul, that man cannot end anywhere. Praise the name of the living God. So, the reason why we come to church is that the soul can prosper. So that anything else that comes after can be built on the foundation of that soul. Praise the name of the living God. The reason why men can have things and yet they can still be corrupt is because the state of their soul has not been rejuvenated. Hallelujah. It has not been Transform. And so the first prosperity is the prosperity of the soul. And that prosperity of the soul determines the, 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 the fruitfulness of the seed in a man. Hallelujah. You see, the extent to which we shall go in life is not dependent on God. Because God gave us everything in Christ. In Christ, we have everything that pertains to life and godliness. But now the extent to which that seed becomes fruitful is determined to the extent which you conform to the prosperity of the soul. 
inalingana na vile ambavyo pia wewe unajiwekea katika roho haleluya are we together are we together i want us to write this point banalike hili that patience is the bridge between the utterance of the will of god and the fulfillment of that will Patience is the bridge between the utterance of the will of God so bila ile daraja kati ya bila ambavyo Mungu amenena and the fulfillment na kukamilika praise the name of the living God hallelujah you know some of us are a work in progress mbegu zingine ni kazi ambayo inaendelea and you see sometimes a man can reach a level of asking himself that why is my life like this mahali kuna wakati mtu anajiuliza mbona maisha yangu yako hivi but the equation of patience lakini swali la subira cannot be taken away haliwezi tolewa because it is through patience sababu ni kupitia kuwa na subira that anything substantial is built ndio mahali ambapo kitu ambacho kina manufaa kinachengwa the truth that even this church that we are sitting today ukweli ni kuwa hata ile kanisa ambalo tumekaa ndani leo it did not start like this haikuanza hivi but god asked papa what is the vision that god gave him lakini enda kuuliza papa maona gani mungu alimpatia he will tell you it's not the way it's not the one we were it started from akakwambia sio bila ambavyo alianza there is a bigger vision that he has na maona makubwa ambayo yako nayo when he was talking about it here na siku alikuwa anaenda kwa yusuf that he sees stadiums anaona pia viwanja vikubwa he sees big things anaona vitu vikubwa so the reason why the church can continue sababu ambayo kanisa inaenda is because that vision is still alive in his soul sababu hayo maana ndani bado yako hallelujah and if we be we are working towards that vision kila siku tunafanya kazi tukielekea haya and so we shall wait patiently kwa sababu ya kusubiri as we are growing from one level to another kwa kuwa kutoka kiwango kimoja until we get to the end point of that vision hadi tunapofika fika mahali pale that God committed to his spirit ila ambaye Mungu alimpatia katika roho hallelujah you know we all of us we have seeds kila mtu ako na mbegu This seed determine what God had put in you as a purpose. He mbegu inaonyesha kila ambacho Mungu ameka ndani yako kama kusudi. And therefore, what God is waiting for at the end of time. Kila ambacho Mungu anangojea kule mwisho wa wakati. It's not how many years you lived. Sio miaka mingapi uliishi. It's not how many places you went. Si mahali pangapi ulienda. But the fulfillment of the purpose that is inside you. Lakini ukamilisho wa ile kusudi ambayo iko ndani yako. Everything shall fail. Everything shall fail. Kila kitu kitaisha. Actually, the preacher in the book of Psalms of Psalms uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes says, katika hicho kitabu wapi ya mbele bila nasema. He says that I've studied all things. Akasema kwa amesoma mambo yote. And I've realized all things are vanity. Amegundua vanity. Amegundua kila kitu hakina maana yoyote. Praise God. You see, the opposite of vanity is reality. Kinyume cha kosa maana na kuwa kwa na maana. And the Bible says that anything that can be seen is temporal. Bila nasema kwa chochote ambacho waweza kuona ni cha muda tu. So it means that the truth about a believer, about a man, kwa hivyo inamaanisha kuwa ukweli kwa ukweli wa yule ambaye anaamini kuhusu mwanadamu. The truth about a man ukweli kuhusu mwanadamu is never physical si ile ambayo tunaweza kuona you, you cannot look at a man and dictate that this man will end like this uweze mtazama mtu na usema huyu mtu mwisho wake atakuwa what has been captured in that man is spiritual kila ambacho kimewekwa ndani ya huyo mtu ni ya kiroho and so the only way you can deal with that man is spiritual kwa hivyo njia tu ambayo unaweza kabiliana na huyo mtu ni kupitia mambo ya kiroho hallelujah praise the lord how do we wait we got some more there baby because I want to finish as I kumaliza praise the lord how do we wait just some more there baby when we wait in prayer we got some more there katika hali ya maombi we wait in prayer some more there katika maombi because the resource which we are given kwa sababu ile rasmali ambayo tulipatiwa as the definition of what a man should do ila ambaye inaonyesha kila ambacho binadamu anafaa kufanya in the book of luke 18 verse 1 you can give me that one katika luka 18 verse 1 luke 18 verse 1 luka 18 verse 1 you can give me that one can we together 
and he spake a parable unto the end to this. Or he spake a parable unto them to this end that men say men. men. Say men. men. Can you read this one? Ox. Uh, I know we have teachers, so we need to have the definition of ox before we go anywhere. What is the meaning of ox? Yes, uh, may I do statistics, so amount of teaching profession. So our English teachers can help us in. Is a must. It means you cannot exonerate yourself from it. A man the dealings that you have on earth is that you will ought say after me ought always to pray praise God I want us to read this statement so that it sinks in you let's start from me part B of it that men ought always to pray and not to faint praise God so it means that if you say a man is fainting, it's because that man is not praying. As long as a man can pray, the possibility of fainting is not in that man. Just give that man time. You will see the power of prayer. You will see the potentials of prayer. Because prayer can change a man. Prayer can transform a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 4 from verse 28. So that I show you that why this, this man not fainting. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not? Praise God. Are we seeing that? The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Uh -huh. Let's go. Verse 29. And he giveth power to the faint. Hallelujah. He giveth power. So it means that the reason why someone cannot faint is because he has received can someone say power? power. Say power. power. Let the devil hear you say power. power. No, we need this power. Yes. We need this power. Because if not that power, demons will embarrass you. Yes, that's why you must carry power. You must carry power. See, power is not only for our apostles. It's not only for prophets. It's not only for teachers and evangelists. It's any man that wants to exist in the realm of the earth. You must carry power. There is something you must carry. Because if you don't carry that thing, one day a challenge will strike your life. And at that time, there are many things that don't be advantaged. And the only resource you will draw from is what is inside you. Hallelujah. Yes. So the Bible says that He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no mind, increases strength. Praise God. Let's go to thirty. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. You see, what this thing is saying that, you see, among the cadres of humanity, the strongest of all is the youth. The Bible says that the glory of a young man is in his strength. But this thing is saying that, and the young man shall utterly fall. It means even the young man can fall. He can be strong. But a challenge can bring him down. What does verse 31 say? But they say, but they. But they. But they. But they. But they. Say, but they. But they. But they. That wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Someone should say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Them that wait upon the Lord 
There is something called waiting. And the reason why we need to wait is because of the prophecies hanging upon our shoulder. It's because of the seeds that have been deposited in our spirit now. The reason why we shall we need the, the power of God is because in this power to, to execute life. The only way you shall live and execute your destiny. Is because you have power. And that power is found in waiting upon the Lord. And so what, 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 what men that are always are looking for is to carry this power. Praise the name of the living God. You see, our generation cannot change because we are talking. Our generation cannot change simply because we are preaching. There is a dimension of power that we need to carry. That when we show up, we bring Jesus on the sea. We don't just preach about Jesus. We don't just say he's healing. But we demonstrate the healing. We don't just say that he came to save. But we demonstrate the saving power. Because there is someone who is carrying power. Praise the name of the living God. You cannot execute destiny. Outside of power, praise the name of the living God. And therefore, that is one thing we must contend for. Even the very gates of your family, your family they cannot open except you come by power. They are demons that have stayed their ancients. They are bonded people for long. Whatever will release them, it's because a man of power has come. So if you walk in life, you will not see the power of God. 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 What they show up is the power of God. They start people with sicknesses. They start people with poverty. Men are found. It only takes power to release those men. Praise the name of the living God. And therefore the Bible says that them that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. The reason why they need to renew their strength is because the journey is far. And the journey is far. That's why you must keep on holding. The altar of prayer and not and we cannot live that altar and not be prayed because if you leave the altar that is the day strength shall be withdrawn from you. So the reason why we are staying as a church, the reason why we shall continue, is because there are men that are praying. Hallelujah. Is someone getting me? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to hear someone. Amen of warriors. Hallelujah. Yes. Them that wait upon the Lord. Hey. Me, I want to wait too. I want to wait. I will not stop. I will not stop. My life cannot feel like this. If you know this verse, you will be waiting up in the night. And pray. You see, God, my life cannot remain like this. My life or my family cannot remain like this. My generation cannot remain like this. And therefore, I come to wait so that I can receive power. I can receive strength. The strength to continue. The strength to endure. The strength to persevere. It is called the strength to persevere. The power to continue. Hallelujah. There is something called the continuing power. It is called the continuing power. The power of persistency. Hallelujah. You know, men, men do not give up because they want. But because they do not have what it takes to continue. And the reason why we stay praying is because by all means we might continue executing destiny. But therefore, this scripture must start being read.
living in your life. Because the Bible says men ought always to pray and not to faint. So if a man is not praying, it means something else. He's not a man. Because if you are a man, you must pray. Praise God. Yes, so you cannot take yourself out of prayer. Prayer is the only way you can execute life. Men must win consistently. You must be able to continue. Even when the times are not falling apart. And you must continue. Hallelujah. We must continue as a church. We must continue waiting. Because in our waiting, God shall prosper us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we together? I want to finish by verse. Because I didn't come to preach for long. I only came to give a chance for our generation. So that our generation will know something. That if you are not praying, there are many things that will fall in your life. Yes, there are many things that will fall in your life. It doesn't matter how much they are praying for you. Yes, in, in my own in my own life, I realized that if a man is not praying, it doesn't matter how much anointing oil you can put on that man. The potential of that oil cannot be actualized. Until that man begins to pray. So the reason why men are still sleeping. It's because they do not know what is hanging on their shoulder. They don't know what God expects them to do. The day your eyes open and see where God wants you to be. The day your eyes open and see the people you need to bring to Christ. You will start praying. Yes, you start praying. You will not leave the altar. There are days that you shall stay there all night. The reason why you are looking for this power. You are waiting for this strength to come upon you. Praise the Lord. The last thing I want to say is that patience is the build of character. So be a peer in a gender tabia. I am no Judah. We worship you. I am no Judah. You are holy. I am no Judah.
Verse 8. First Peter 2 eleven. So my Peter one Because God wants us to be the place of waiting. There are so many things that we need to bring to come to pass. And as far as heaven is concerned, you are the person who is waiting for. You see, we have been prayed for for long. We got tired of falling down. And I said, if my life is going to end like this, then I disagree. Praise God. Yes. Someone needs to be angry with yourself. How comes they are laying hands on me every Sunday? And nothing is changing. My character has not begun to change. The same demons that is oppressing you at night are still oppressing you. And you are not tired of yourself. Someone needs to be angry. And say it cannot be like this. Yes. It takes a hungry man to change anything. And anything that does not touch your heart cannot change your life. So if nothing can touch your life, to your heart, you can change your life. Because anything that does not touch your heart cannot touch God. Hallelujah. Yes. Give me verse 11. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Mapenzi, mapenzi, na wasi kama wapitaji, na usafiri, ziyepukeni tama za mwili, zipika nazo na roho. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The fall of man in the garden of Eden brought certain side effects to man. So a man can be born. And if he's born, there are certain things naturally that man can do. And so you can design the impact of the fall. The impact of the fall in the life of that man. So if you see someone is given to immorality, if someone is given to pride, if someone is given to what we call materialism, it means that that is the that is the place that the impact of the fall had much advantage. I don't know whether you are getting the point I'm making. Praise God. It means if you see men are depicting certain characters, it tells you where the fall got that man. Praise God. So, if a man is doing something, the first thing when you come to Christ, listen, listen to this. The first thing when you come to Christ is that you get what is called regeneration. Your spirit is made whole. You become a new creation. You become a new creation. The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, it's a new creation. Now, that born again is in the spirit of that man. But it's not in his soul. And it's not in his body. So there must be a transition. 
That the soul of that man must be transformed. Praise God. So that what is in his spirit can be reflected in his soul. Praise the name of the living God. Uh, have we gotten that? I don't know that we are together because I know I'm speaking English from university. So, most of you are not getting me, but the thing is centered in you. I'm very sure about that one. In the university, we preach very focus. So that those people who think they know English, they should meet us. When we talk in two minutes, you will ask us, what are we saying? What are we saying? Where are we going? Yeah, because there are men there who think some of us are, we don't understand. But when we sit somewhere and begin to talk to them about salvation, we bring the context of Christ into his own reality. We bring the context of Christ Praise God. So I know you are getting me, but not in your ears. You are getting me the spirit. So I will tell you that if a man falls, if a man is doing a certain thing, if that man continues in that thing, it means there is something that is at work in that man. And it's called the law of sin. That law of sin is what brings about flesh the last. You see, the Bible says in the book of John. I think it should be second John or first John. That do not love the world. Or the things that in the world. Whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For that which is in the world is the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. I want us to get this point. This last can be a man even is born again. That's why you can see someone depicting a character which is not close to Christ. That man may be genuine. That man may be genuine. That That man may be genuine. He may love God. But he doesn't know why he's given to certain things. Praise God. He may even try to stop. He made a right resolution and said from today. You know, what I'm preaching, I know it. Because I've gone through this. You want to stop something. And in January, they fast. When that day you go for crossover night, you go and write in your diary. From today, I will not do this. Before you finish. Before you are doing the same thing. You know, it's not like you wanted to do it. See, I will go and talk with you. But the impact of the fall. But in the middle of the fall, you are going to go. Cause it that you must just do that thing. It has been working in the ancestry for the law for long. It has been working in the ancestry for the law for long. It has been working in the ancestry for the law for long. So by reason that you come from that bloodline, so by reason that you come from that bloodline, that thing must take place. It's called the law of sin. But the Bible says that I'm saying. Because this thing is warring against the soul. Then you can see that the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Then the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Then the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Then the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Then the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Then the soul of the man is the soul of the man. Consistently, and that thing becomes part of his life. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. Then, God is that that man must get to hell. That shall get to eternity. At the end of times. And so if your soul is not kept pure. 
Kwa hivyo kama moyo wako hauko sawa. It cannot approach the holiness of God. Hawezi enda katika usawa wa Mungu. Now the Bible is saying from us let's be part it says that dearly beloved I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. You know what that means? Na maanisha hivi. Is that we need to live on earth. Tafaka kuishi duniani. As men that are not of earth. Kama ambao sio wa hapa. We should contact the earth. We should contact the earth. Without being contaminated with the earth. Bila kufanywa tukue na uchafu kutoka kwa dunia. Praise God. And so it is the possibility wazekano of living as a pilgrim. Kuishi kama mpitaji. Is that you are you are patiently waiting upon the Lord. Kwa unasubiri Mungu. You are consistently unaendelea. You are consistently unaendelea. Continuing in God. Kuendelea katika Mungu. Because as far as we are concerned, bila ambavyo tuko. They can advise you. Waweza kuambia. They can counsel you. Waweza kukupea wasi. They can speak to the counsel of pastor. Waweza kuleta kwa wao. They will speak with you. Until you stop doing this. Kwambia wachana na hili. But you know why you can go back and continue doing it. How do you find out that when they only think that can shape your character. Bila ambavyo tunazabadilisha tabia yako. Is God. Ni Mungu. Don't believe me, don't say amen. Kama umwamini useme amen. If you believe me say amen. Kama unaamini sema amen. According to me, kulingana na and look at the scripture. If a man is to change their character, kama mtu atabadilisha matendo, tutamdhirimo Mungu. It will take the Holy Spirit. Jaribu Roho Mtakatifu transforming that man. Badilisha huyo mtu. Is is hard to change a man. Ni vigumu kubadilisha mwanadamu. It took us to be a serious this guy, you know. I tell In fact, I lie down. I say, it took me five years to stop this thing. Ten years to stop this thing. I see the problem is that character is not normally shown on the visible. Shida ni kuwa tabia na yonyeshe inje. When we come to church, we can package ourselves well and become good. Kija kanisani tuweza kujifanya tuone kanya wazuri. That's why I say Christianity is not practiced in church. Kwa ndio nasema kuwa Ukristo haufanyi kwa hapa kanisani. Christianity is practiced at home. Ukristo unaonekana kule is practiced in the school, kule shule. Is practiced Yeah, it is outside the church. Inje ya kanisa. In the church you come for empowerment to live the Christian life. Kwa hiyo kanisani tunakuja kupata nguvu kuishi maisha. But it is outside is where you practice Christianity. Ni kule inje sasa ndio unafanyia kazi Ukristo wa. Hallelujah. And so something that we need to know kila mtu tunafaa kujua is that the reason why God tests us sababu ambayo Mungu anatujalia and the pastor through certain trials na pitia majaribu is to shape our character ili kuweza kubadilisha tabia because anything God cannot test he cannot trust kwa hivyo kila ambacho Mungu anaweza jaribu haizi kiamini if God is to trust something kama Mungu atamini he must test it lazima ijaribu for it to no testing is a examination that you must go through kujaribiwa ni ni mtihani ambao lazima upitie you must go through testing lazima upitie kujaribiwa for you to pass the exam unaweza kupita mtihani and receive the reward for the exam ili uweze kupata pia ile it means that no man should fear na test hakuna mtu anafaa kuogopa majaribu because test is only brings you the reward majaribu ndio yanakupatia ile zawadi right now we are going to start exams next week I should not fear those exams. Because if I do those exams, at the end of the day I will have a certificate. And eventually graduate. So I should not like the graduation part. I don't like the examination part. All of that must go hand in hand. Are we are we together? Are we together? Praise God. So there are so many tests you pass through. Kuna majaribu mengi sana utapitia. So that God will shape you. Ili Mungu aweze kukutengeneza. In the book of Acts 2:32. Katika Mathayo mitume 2:32. I commend you unto God. Kwa hivyo nakuweka kwa Mungu. Unto the words of his grace. Na pia kwa maneno ya neema yake. That is able to build you up. Among them that are sanctified. Na pe urithi kati ya wale ambao pia wameoshwa. So the truth is that you must be built up is when you get the inheritance so God is in a business of shaping us building us, molding us so that we can be able to carry the capacity of the inheritance that is awaiting us hallelujah
my time is up. So it means I cannot continue. Hallelujah. I want to tell us one thing as I'm finishing. That in the shaping of a character of a man, and building the capacity of that man it will take prayers it will take fasting it will take reading the word why we go through these things is to expand you enough so that you can be able to carry the capacity for your generation you know, it is good we are coming from a very prophetic church. But me, if they give me prophecy, I will not cry. I just want pray. Because it takes prayer to translate what is in the realm of the spirit to the realm of God. I am telling you a secret talk. If Papa comes to there and prays for you, go and start fasting. If he prophesies, go and start prayer. According to me, that is the meaning of what he has done. Prophecy does not just come because they have said it. It will take prayer to make that prophecy. Hallelujah. So if they say, you know, I mean, I remember this. I'm just waiting for my time. If they call me, if they call me, I just come and the moment I go back, I will be ascending. I will be speaking in terms that will see that thing come to pass. Because as far as I'm concerned, every man must participate in actualizing what God has said. You must stand in the gap that will bring that thing to pass. Your family, you might be sent in your family as the deliverer. But that's just the fact that seeing your deliverer doesn't mean you deliver the family. Consistent priesthood. Consistent prayer. Maombi akila sisi. To change them that are not born again. But this shawala kwa wajao kwa. To be born again. Waisa kwa kwa. Praise the name of the living God. That's why the church must go back to the place of alignment. Lazima tu hende mahali ba kuunga nika. The place, the place where we know what we need to do. Kila mahali ambapo kuna jua kila mbali kuna fakwa. The reason why we change the generation. Sababu kwa kwa watu anabadi. Is because they knew what to do. Manano alijua kila kwa. He knew what prayer is. And in the days that they were captured to Babylon, that man stayed upon his watch and said that let Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be at the king's court. But I shall stand in the gate and I will pray. That man prayed until he brought the whole Babylon down. An angel had to appear because a man was praying. In our generation, we have lost the priesthood dimension. We are not done with prayers. So we do not know what it means to incubate. In the days of the apostles, there were men like Stephen. They were in the kitchen, they were serving the shasas. But in the days that they called this thing called prayer, they said, God, what you need to Peter do to me? And in those days, they began to pray. And they changed their world. Because they were there. Stephen worked miracles, and wonders. In those days, men like Philip, they rose. And even the end of transport, the end of transport, the end of transport that had been lost, a man called Philip brought it back. Philip was in Indonesia. It means the inconsistent priesthood. We shall become pathfinders. We shall bring the, the dimension of the ancient parts. We shall not change not just because we are anointed and we are going to school. We are many preachers in Kenya. But what it takes to bring Kenya to Jesus is men that know what is called prayers. Prayers in the niche. In the book of Luke 18 verse 1. The Bible is not a woman. She consistently brought the judge. Until the judge brought forth what was I want? It was impunity, continuity. It was persistency. That brought about the results. 
that a man lives. If you are not consistent, nothing can work. If you get consistency to bring back the will of God, it takes consistency to throw back God. If a generation is not praying, we shall perish. We need a prayer generation. Men that can stay in their own town. And say, as far as I'm concerned, I shall change my world. Because I shall stay on my knees. If we have your knees, you're not disadvantaged. If we have your knees, you're not disadvantaged. If a man has their knees, they can change their world. Because when you are standing, you will begin to pray. And say, oh God, my generation cannot perish. My love cannot perish. The love of my church cannot perish. Because you have called me to stand in the gap, to change my world. If someone can be tired in their situation, they can change their situation. If a man is tired in their family, they can change their family. If a man is tired with what is happening, they can change it. Because that Lord, what is called prayer. Hallelujah. We shall pray. Let's rise on our feet. We shall pray. We shall pray. So that by all means, in the hand of God can come down. Some will just pray in tongues in one minute as we're ending this service. Because prayer need to return to the church. I was so challenged. I was so challenged. I came to church and I found our mama here. She stayed here all Kesha. And I asked, Where are our young men? Where are our youths? We are, we are bragging that we are strong. Yet we cannot pray. I hope that mother can stay here. She's praying. She was here in the morning. I see what is happening. Can someone pray in tongues in one minute? Shilando Sifra Kadabai. Receive my Makadia Paradia. Lord, my generation cannot remain the same. I shall wait patiently in prayer. I shall continue praying. I shall stand in the gap for the sake of my generation. For the sake of my generation, oh God. Bring something down that is tangible. Bring something down that is strong, oh God. Upon our shoulder, oh Father. Bring something that is down. That oh God, we shall not stay in the same spot for too long. Our families shall not stay in the same spot for too long. Our church cannot stay in the same spot for too long. But there are men of prayer, intercessors, prophetic intercessors, apostles, preachers, oh God, raise men for our generation. But in the name of Jesus, men shall be praying. The altar shall be burning with fire. Rika Balua, where we may shall be 